Hey guys, what's up? Today I'll be ranking every single JRPG released on the PS1. For this, I'm gonna use the tierlists.com website where I build a complete list of PS1 JRPGs. All of this, all of these babies will be ranked by me, in my opinion. Now, this list only includes North American releases, no PAL only games and obviously not only in Japan games. I'm also including remakes, of course, but I'm not including ports, which means Final Fantasy Anthology or Final Fantasy Chronicles are not gonna be in this list. Anyway, back here, I'm gonna explain what my rankings mean. They should be pretty obvious by now, but let's just explain it one more time before we begin. S means the game is absolutely amazing. It is um, among my personal favorites. A means the game is great, like it is a very good, very good RPG. B is the game's good, uh, above decent, way above average, pretty good. C, let's just say it's an okay game, like good, but that's just it, you know, just plain good, average. D, it's gonna be like mediocre slash kinda bad, and E is absolutely terrible. Okay, so with that clarified, let's begin! And we're gonna start with Wild Arms. The first one, the iconic start of a very, very good series. Now, it might be kind of historically important, but in my opinion, it's not one of the greatest RPGs in the system, at least not among my favorites. It is still pretty good, so I'm gonna give it a B. The sequel, however, well, this is actually in my top 10 favorite RPGs on the system, so it's probably gonna be in the A here. It's not in my top 5 or anything of the sort, but I really like this game uh, way more than the first Wild Arms. That doesn't mean the Wild Arms stays behind, but it's just, in my opinion, the second one is better. Valkyrie Profile, of course. I absolutely love this game. A masterpiece. I'm a huge fan of this series, so of course Valkyrie Profile needs to be in the S here for me. I love this game, guys. Grandia. Grandia is, like Wild Arms, the start of a great underrated series. Nowadays dead, sadly. Hopefully, thanks to the recent uh, remasters on the Switch, it'll come back. Maybe we'll see a Grandia 4 one day. But anyway. So guys, as much as I love this game, it is actually my least favorite out of the three main titles, not counting uh, Grandia Extreme. So, I like all three of them, don't take me wrong, but this is going to be as well. Final Fantasy VII, you know the story, I've told the story so many times. When I first played this game, I fell in love with it. I beat this game twice, not twice in a row, but twice. And eventually, as years passed, I stopped being a hardcore fan. And nowadays, I just see it as a great game, but that's just it. And it pains me. You know, if I had done this list years ago, it would be here, on the A tier. But, it's just, it didn't grow very well with me. So, let's just put it here, on the B tier. Anyway, Final Fantasy VIII. Final Fantasy VIII, to be honest, if I had to choose between VIII and seven, I will go with seven. Final Fantasy VIII is a great game, I loved it. The story, the soundtrack, the characters. Well, half of the cast of characters. And, I gotta admit, it's just full of problems, so... Because it has way too many positives, except some of the gameplay mechanics, it's gonna, hear, gonna go here as well, on the B. You know Final Fantasy IX is my absolute favorite. Nine is my favorite in the series, and this is on my top five favorite RPGs in the system. Probably my top six or even seven. So Final Fantasy IX goes straight to the S tier, baby. Final Fantasy Tactics, ah, you know, as much as I love strategy RPGs, I did play this game twice. I gave this game two chances. By twice, I didn't mean that I beat the game. I just gave it two chances and I couldn't get into it. I don't know why. I'm a huge fan of the genre, like I said, but Final Fantasy Tactics, even though it's one of the most iconic in the genre, it's just something about it that I couldn't get into it. So, for me, I hope you guys don't take offense, it's gonna be here on B. Because you know what? The story and the music here are really freaking good. Anyway, 
Chrono Cross, come on, it's too damn obvious. My favorite RPG of all time needs no explanation. Just go straight to the S tier. Vandal Hearts, I love this game. Probably one of my favorite hidden gems on the system. Greatly underrated, criminally underrated strategy RPG. But this guy goes straight to the A. Anyway, the sequel, Vandal Hearts 2. The sequel, well, the infamous sequel, it's still, it's still a pretty good game, but you know, the battle system changed. Uh, whenever you move, the enemies move, then you gotta move backwards to make them move backwards. I don't know, it's just, it was very weird and very hard to get into. It is still a hidden gem, but let's just say it's not one of the best hidden gems. This goes straight to C. Rhapsody, a musical adventure, what a fun RPG, man. Another extremely short RPG, kind of middle of the road game, strategy RPG, and this is by far the easiest, and I mean it, the easiest RPG I've ever played in my life. I can beat this game with my eyes closed, and it's pretty good. It's just a funny story, it's a very funny story as a matter of fact, it's one of those stories where the comedy actually makes me laugh. So Rhapsody, when with Vandal Hearts 2 here on the C tier. Saga Frontier, what can I say people, what can I say, I don't think it's a bad game, I don't think it's a terrible game, but I still hate it, I can't get into this game, I know I need a walkthrough in order to at least beat one of the characters here, but it's just the way this game was made, it turned me completely off. So this is gonna go straight to D. Now Saga Frontier 2 is a much better game in my opinion, you can choose between two characters, one of them is harder than the other, but Overall, it's just, you choose Gustav, you know, one of the two main characters, and the game is brutally hard, very challenging, but you don't need a walkthrough, like, all the time, and that made things better for me. And overall, also, the battle mechanics were far superior than in the first one. But, it's, but still, you know, I gotta admit, I'm not a, the biggest fan of this game, so this guy goes straight to C. Saiyuki, Journey West. This is another hidden gem, strategy RPG, very fun to play, a comedy through and through. However, it's also one of those middle of the road games, not exactly one of the greatest hidden gems or the greatest RPGs in the system. It is very fun to play. I'm gonna put this game at C, even though out of these four, this is the best one in my opinion. But it just has, I think, gameplay wise, is a little bit generic. Could have done a better job, but still a pretty good game. Shadow Tower, in my opinion, is one of the absolute worst RPGs on the system, made by From Software. The Kingsfield games were better, in my opinion. Shadow Tower was just very bad, trash in almost every single sense. So this is E. This is E level, man. Star Ocean 2. Everybody knows this game. Great action RPG. One of my personal favorites too. It goes straight to A. Suikoden, the first Suikoden is gonna go straight to A, just because it has the same problem as Vandal Hearts. Everything is fantastic in this game, except the fact that it's just too damn short. I beat this game in 15 hours, and I was like, come on, this should have been way longer. They fixed that with Suikoden 2, Masterpiece, love this game, one of my personal favorites in the system, go straight to S tier, baby. Tactics Ogre, let us cling together, this is a remake of the Super Nintendo version, or rather the Super Famicom version that never came out of Japan. This has, to me, the same problem as Final Fantasy Tactics. A great game, very influential, it's just I couldn't get into it, but the story and the music and the concept and the historical importance of it makes me put this game on B, next to, next to its offspring. Final Fantasy Tactics wouldn't exist without Tactics Tactics Over. Tales of Destiny. A lot of fans of this game, but in my opinion, this is one of the weakest Tales of titles. It is still pretty good, but the encounter rate is atrocious here, and the puzzle solving is just uh, so annoying. Tales of Destiny, it, it is a, still a pretty good game, but it is among my least favorites in the series, so this is gonna go here, on the C here. I guess Tales of Eternia, or also known as Tales of Destiny 2, could be right there, because I played this on the PSP and I got into it, I think it's better than Tales of Destiny, but if I had to choose between the two, they both have similar problems. But anyway, I also played the original on the PS1, and uh, I gotta say, between these two, I just can't choose, 
They're good games. They just don't stand out for me, in my opinion. I think the PSP version of this game is much better. If you guys want to play that game, play that version instead. Thousand Arms is another fun game, a hidden gem, turn-based RPG. But you know, the story, even though it's a comedy, half of the time I was cringing. It's not that good of a story or not that good of a comedy, in my opinion. The battle system is pretty damn good. It is good, the music is okay. And it also has this dating simulation that I, I actually enjoy the game. But then again, it's just in a lot of areas, this game doesn't really stand out. So I'm gonna put it as well in the C area. Tornico is a roguelike RPG based on one of the four main characters in Dragon Quest IV. To be honest, I found this game very unbalanced. In comparison with most roguelike RPGs, this was like, uh, sometimes it was way too easy and sometimes way too hard. And I don't know, I'm not a fan of this character. Nothing compels me to play this game, to be honest. Uh, I don't know, guys, if you are a fan of this guy, play the game. If you like roguelike RPGs, play it. If you don't, just don't bother with it. Let's just put it at D. It's just, it's not a bad game, but it's, uh, forgettable, you know. Anyway, Vagrant Story, uh, great game. Another game that I just couldn't get into it because I did understand everything about it, the battle mechanics, the battle system, it just for some reason didn't appeal to me that much. However, it pales in comparison with a lot of games, in my opinion, not a fan of this game, I'm just gonna put it here. Very hard game too, as a matter of fact. Vanguard Bandits, I love this game. Again, it's a strategy RPG, one of my absolute favorite hidden gems in the system, very good, localized by working designs, uh, this game is going straight to a. There we go. Xeno Gears. Well, what can I say? I praise this game every single time that I can, so let's just put it straight in the A section. Xeno Gears. It needs a remake, right, guys? Huh. Front Mission. I played this game very recently, and I gotta admit, I was impressed. I was expecting the worst because I played a remake of the first game on the Nintendo DS and didn't like it. But this one, wow, it, it, it's pretty damn fun. Controls are kind of clunky, as is the camera, so that kind of bothered me a little bit, but other than that, it's a fantastic game. This is a game that I can easily get into, and I really see, I really do see myself finishing this game one day. So it's gonna be here, on the B one. Hoshigami, I hate the game, what can I say, it is absolute terrible, absolutely terrible. I don't even want to talk about it, again, I talked about this recently, lame-ass strategy RPG full of problems, difficulty spikes, it's just beyond awful, man. Cardia, on the other hand, another strategy RPG that is almost a masterpiece, great story, one of the greatest stories ever written in the system, I love this game, I've talked about this game a million times already, Cardia goes straight to the A tier for me. This, this is in my top 10 as a matter of fact. Great music and also character design by the same guy who made the characters in Final Fantasy VI. Kingsfield, here we have Kingsfield 1 and 2. I've said it before, I like the games even though they are exactly the type of game that I don't like. Kingsfield 2, I felt it was, I don't know, I couldn't really get into it. I had an easier time getting into the first Kingsfield, but this is, this is the hardest RPG I've ever played in the PS1 and not only it's difficulty but also the first person navigation kind of turned me off so this is why I'm gonna put it here along with the second one I'm not a fan of these games they're good don't take me wrong but they're more like an acquired taste and I just can't get into them I don't see myself finishing any of these games like never Kurelka this is again a middle-of-the-road RPG it's not bad it's not that good either it was a great, historically important RPG because this was the beginning of the Shadow Heart series. Or rather, this spawned the, Rado the Shadow Heart series. So Kurelka, it's a turn-based RPG. It's not that good, it's full of problems. It's just gonna go straight to the C tier. Alundra 1 and 2 action RPGs. This one's full of puzzles, brutally hard puzzles. But it's still a pretty darn good game, the idea of it all entering the dreams, just going inside people's dreams to save them and to solve the puzzles and do the dungeons and fighting enemies. This is a good game, it's going to be. Alondra 2, however, not that good of a game. I had trouble with this game. I liked it, but that's just it. 
Uh, it's still better than Saga Frontier or any of the others in the D section, so I'm just gonna put it here on the C tier. Brave Fencer Musashi goes straight to C as well. Uh, it's a fun game, but for some reason it turned it kind of kind of turned me off. I didn't want to play this game. I don't see myself finishing this game. But this guy here is it's a very fun game, so it's definitely it doesn't belong here in the D one. Breath of Fire three, love the game. No need to talk about it. I'm just gonna put it here. Breath of Fire four, same deal. I'm just gonna put it here. I'm not the biggest Breath of Fire fan. But these two are equally amazing. I always have a hard time deciding which one is better. I think I like Breath of Fire 4 more, but that's just my opinion. Brigadin is a great strategy RPG, had a lot of potential, but it's also full of problems. Very hard to get into, brutally hard game. It's just a game that, in my opinion, needed a better tutorial, like a better way to treat players at the beginning. They just kind of throw you in. Plus, battles take too damn long. Brigadin, it goes on the C letter. Not too many C's right now, huh? Dragon Valor, a great action RPG, hidden gem through and through. What I love about Dragon Valor is that there are multiple routes to follow and multiple characters to play as, and your decisions matter a lot in this game. They influence the outcome, they influence everything. This is a true role playing game, very fun. However, gameplay wise, the platforming was kind of bad, controls are a little bit clunky. It's not that great of a game, to be honest, but it's still pretty damn decent. It goes with all the others on the C tier. Dragon Warrior 7, man. What an amazing game. Great music. I love the music in this game. However, it's just... I know most of the complaints go against the length of the game. It's one of the longest RPGs, if not the longest RPG in the system. However, that wasn't what turned me off. It's just the re repetitive nature of the game going to a ruin, coming back, restoring the ruin and finding the puzzle and so on. It's just, I, got, I grew tired of it. Plus, I rage quit in a boss battle. It's still a beautiful game. Let's just put it in C. Doesn't deserve to be in the D level. Eternal Eyes is fairly mediocre. It's strategy RPG. You just play as one guy and you keep recruiting monsters or more like creating monsters. So, not exactly like Pokemon, but similar nonetheless. It's a hidden gem, don't take me wrong, but it's just one of the weakest hidden gems in the system. It goes right here in the D level. Final Fantasy Origins, I put it here because it is a remake. I mean, compared to the NES titles, wow, the, the difference is huge. Still, gameplay-wise, no matter how beautiful these, these two games look, they are a pain in the ass to play, at least in my opinion. Let's just say I'm not the greatest fan of the first Final Fantasy games. So, for me, these are great games, historically important. But for me, they're just not very fun to play. Here, on the D level. Guardians Crusade is one of the most boring RPGs I've ever played in my life. When I first played this game, I liked it. I thought it was good enough for the Hidden Gems video, so I included this game there. And I still think it's a hidden gem. It grows on you. But it takes a long ass time, man. It's boring, it's kind of mediocre, middle of the road. I don't know about this game anymore, to be honest. I kind of regret praising the game before, but it's not a bad game at all. But eh, however, it stays on the D section. Playing a Dragoon, no reason to talk about it, it goes straight to B. Wish I could put it here, but there were a lot of areas here that I turned me off and the final boss battles, ugh, wow, so annoying. Great game nonetheless. Legaya goes straight to B2, praised this game before. Between this and the Legend of Dragoon, I think I'm gonna keep the Legend of Dragoon. I go for this. Legend of Legaya doesn't stay behind. What a great game, in my opinion. Legend of Mana. Well, I always have trouble with this game. It is a very good game, but it requires a walkthrough because it's kind of open world. You keep expanding the world and then you keep choosing your missions and party members. In terms of exploration and navigation, it's kind of convoluted and vague, but the music, the battle system, you know, it just has a lot of positive aspects that outweigh the negatives. But still, it's a game that I didn't finish, and I don't see myself finishing this game without a walkthrough. So, I'm gonna put it here, at C. Lunar 1 and 2, uh, the Silver Star story and Eternal Blue are equally amazing. Honestly, I can't decide between the two. Uh, Lunar is the only, the first Lunar is the only one that I have ever finished. The second one, I got far into it. Pretty good too, but it's just, I can't decide. However, this is gonna shock you, but 
I'm not the greatest fan of these games. I like them. I thought they had some really unique ideas. But in the end, gameplay-wise, story-wise, I found them to be like average. And that's just it. Therefore, they go into the C level. Both of them. Sorry about that. You, you were probably expecting to see them here in the B or A. Eh, that's just your opinion against mine, I guess. Mega Man Legends 1 and 2, I know a lot of you will argue that are not RPGs at all. To me, they're action RPGs because the role-playing elements that I found in both are very strong when it comes to customization, leveling up, uh, spending time talking and a lot of story involved. So yeah, but if, if, you don't, if you think they don't belong here, okay, I respect that. Either way, either way, they're not really that good. The first one was kind of lame, to be honest. Second one was better. It deserves to be here on the C level because I really got far into this. This I put a, a few hours and just playing quick with the game. I think Mega Man Legends 2 is a huge improvement, so that's why I put it on the C letter. Monster City is trash. One of the worst RPGs uh, I've played in my life, to be honest. Very boring, very tedious, very repetitive. Shitty story. It's just bad, man. Ogre Battle, another remake of the Super Nintendo version. Super Nintendo version, we did get that one, so it probably shouldn't be here, but I did say at the beginning, remakes were gonna be here. Ogre Battle is very hard to get into, real-time strategy game, takes missions, or rather maps, take too damn long, you can be there for almost two hours, man. So it's kind of tedious, but it's so addictive that you kind of forgive it. It goes to C. Here. Parasite Eve, I am a huge fan of this game and I don't know why I've been feeling more and more connected to it. For some reason, I like it even more than I did before. So it goes straight to A, man. Love this game with a passion. I wish this game could be longer. It's also a very short RPG. It's sequel, however, Parasite Eve 2. Ah, not a good game at all. Not bad either. It just pales in comparison. Nah, goes here. Oh yeah, here, right here, I know. Probably should be on the C level, but nah. I hate Persona 1 on the PlayStation. I played the PSP version twice a long time ago and quite recently for the second time. I liked it, I think the, the encounter rate is really high, and I don't know, for some reason I just couldn't get into this game. The navigation in first person killed the experience for me. It doesn't deserve to be on the E, on the worst RPG section, but it does deserve to be here, right here on the D, because it's not a good game in my opinion. The PSP remake is far better. The sequel, however, is pretty damn good. However, it is still a really hard game, in my opinion, and it does get tedious in some dungeons and some parts. Sometimes, I gotta admit, I didn't know where the hell was I supposed to go or what the hell was I supposed to do. But either way, the story and the music and the battle mechanics were a huge improvement, so I'm gonna put this game on the C, along with all the others. Persona 2. Jade Cocoon, again, it's about monster hunting, turn-based RPG. You only play with your character and the monsters do the fighting for you. I thought it was, I don't know, there's just something about this game. You should go straight to the D level and, I, well, I, I guess I'm, I can't decide between D and C because it's not that good, but it's charming. There's something compelling about this game that you play and you're like, it is pretty damn good. So I'll forgive it for this time and put it here on the C among all these other cool RPGs. Grand Stream Saga, man, I strongly... You have no idea how much I regret recommending this game. When I first played it, I was like, okay, it's a hidden gem, it's decent, let's just include the game. But then I kept playing the game, I kept playing the game over and over, and I got to a point where I hated the game. Okay, I hate this freaking game nowadays. I don't think it's the worst, but ugh, it's a D for me, man. Beyond the Beyond is trash, it is one of the worst RPGs in the system, I don't think it's that bad, it's just full of problems like all of the ones here on the D tier, so let's just put it there. <laughs> now I have these three games here, Digimon World 1, 2 and 3. I gotta be honest with you, I haven't played the second one or the third one, why? Because I'm not a fan at all of this franchise, of this series, I don't care one bit about these games. These are the competition of Pokemon, I don't like Pokemon, can't get into Pokemon, whatever. So when I first played the first one, I was like, okay, I see how this game is 
pretty damn decent, but it's just not my kind of game. So I hope I don't offend anybody, but this just goes straight to D, along with all the others. This one, Digimon World 3, could be here among the worst. I've seen the reviews of it and critics pan this game like it's really bad apparently, but I don't know, I haven't played it, let's just put it here. Asher Dreams is a roguelike RPG with some simulation elements, dating simulation and all that jazz. Town Simulator, for so to say. It's pretty damn decent, but again, it's a roguelike, not my cup of tea, but uh, let's just say there's something special about this game. However, again, here. I'm sorry I couldn't get into it. Like the majority of roguelike RPGs, it's just not my type of game. Threats of Fate, good game, action RPG. You can choose between two characters. I barely cover this game on my channel, I don't know why. But again, I'm not the biggest fan of it. It's good, just don't expect too much of it. Let's just say it has a lot of problems too. But unlike some of the guys here in this D section, Problems here are easily overlooked, I mean, some platforming problems are kind of annoying, but the rest is okay, it's an okay game, above average, I'm gonna put it here on the C among all the others. Now, are the lab 1, 2 and 3? We didn't get these separately, Working Designs lo localized the entire collection with all three of them, plus a spin-off, which is like a monster tournament game, not an RPG anymore. So these three, I'm gonna treat them as totally separated games. The first one is good, I liked it, but it's too damn short, 12 hours and I beat this game. So it goes straight to the C one. Second one was much better, I really like this game. Long game, 25-30 hours, much better game, much better story, lots of characters. Love this freaking game, goes straight to B level, man. With all these guys here. The third one, this one pales in comparison to most of these, so I didn't think it was that good of a game. Turn me off, very quest driven, story was kind of dumb, I don't know what happened here, it is the weakest, one of the weakest arc the lad in the series, I'm just gonna put it here man, on the D. Wish it could go up to C, but it's just, in my opinion, it's fairly mediocre. Last but not least, Battle Hunter, this is a weird RPG, I don't think, this is like the Mega Man Legends games. I don't think this is an RPG per se, because it acts more like a party game, multiplayer, couch co-op, as a matter of fact. Not, not co-op, you play against your friends or family or whatever. But it's a fun RPG because there are some strong RPG elements like leveling up, like uh, admitting quests, finding stuff, uh, customizing things and items. So I guess I see the RPG elements of it, but in terms of story, there's almost zero story in this game. It focuses 100% on its gameplay mechanics. It's fun, but only if you play it with more people. If you play this game by yourself, I'm sorry, it is very, very mediocre. So that's it, people. That's it. That is my tier list. I have officially ranked every single PS1 JRPG in existence with at least a North American release. That's it for this video. Thanks for watching, everybody. See you next time.